Yo, what's up, Surfer Squad? Tanner here, and I'm back with another easy DIY tutorial. For last week's project, I said that if we get that video to 10,000 likes, I would make a more complicated version of a living wall. We're almost at that goal, but this is not that project. In fact, it's the complete opposite. Many of you wanted to see something easier, cheaper, and with moss. With the other one fresh in your mind, I figured it made sense to follow up with this build. I'll show you how to make a mini self-watering moss wall for less than $50. Links for all of the products used will be down in the video description for your convenience. Let's get to work. Instead of building the whole thing from scratch, I was able to find the perfect set of bins at Target. They came in various sizes and two different colors, so we have options. I'll use a large size bin for the main compartment. The medium bin lids nest perfectly in the top. I'll cut this down to a smaller size based on the height of my pump. To ensure the pump is fully submerged, this piece should be slightly taller. We also need to account for the embossed labels on the bottom. I measured and marked for this accordingly. By the way, I'm using a mini 50 gallon per hour pump. Rather than using power tools, I decided to do a throwback and cut it down with a handsaw. My blade is pretty dull so it took a while to get through. As you can see, this will create the perfect barrier when the large bin is standing in a vertical position. To secure the pieces, I have plastic bonding glue. It's a two-part system that fuses plastic together. The first step is to apply the activator. I brushed it onto the areas where the pieces meet. I waited a minute and applied glue along the ridge on the bin lid. I put it in place and applied pressure for a minute or two. I let it sit overnight to get a proper cure. Once the glue was dry, I did a water test. It held water perfectly, so we're good to add the pump. I placed it in the bottom and determined how much wire was needed. I made sure to leave a little extra and cut it. From there I screwed a hole in the top of the bin to run the wire through. I left extra wire in the bin so the pump can be serviced later. Let's get it rewired. First I stripped a portion of the wire casing. We'll cover up the connections with heat shrink tubing. I cut a tube in half. I put one over both wires and then over each of the individual wires. You'll notice that one wire is smooth and the other has a ridge. The difference helped me know what wires to twist together. I pulled the shrink tubes over and used a heat gun to shrink them. Now that it's rewired, we can seal up the hole. For that I chose silicone meant for use on plastics. I don't know what's different about it, but I've used it before and it definitely works better in applications like this. I put a generous amount over the opening and around the cord. I also decided to put some along the seam on the front. Even though I confirmed it holds water, I figured it made sense to apply silicone for added protection. Lastly, I put a dab on the middle of the wire to hold it up against the plastic. I let everything cure for 24 hours. Here it is now. It looks good overall, but I don't like the cord coming out of the top. I guess it was an oversight on my part. I repeated the previous step on the other container and fed the cord through the back instead. I used this one for the remainder of the project. I want this to be an all-in-one system, so I think it makes sense to include lighting as well. I found this awesome gooseneck light for a reasonable price on Amazon. It's flexible and has a magnetic mount. It also came with a few attachment pieces that we can utilize for the build. I tested it out for placement and marked for it on the back. I used one of the sticky metal plates which does a great job holding the light in place. Unfortunately, the pump I'm using didn't include a hose. You may be able to save money on one that does, but for this one I had to pick up a vinyl hose. I did a test fit with the full length and cut off a small section. We only need around a foot. After attaching it to the pump, it should fit like so. I marked the top portion of the hose to indicate where water should return to the system. I drilled holes along this line to create a spray bar of sorts. I plugged up the end with my finger and did a test run. 
It looked pretty good, so I went on to cover the end with silicone. I let it cure for the appropriate amount of time. The next component we'll need is filter foam. The ones I got are 300 ppi, and they worked great. The higher the ppi, the better it works for something like this. I wouldn't recommend going lower than 300. Anyway, I measured four and cut out a piece that fits on the bottom around the pump. I repeated the process for the back. When I tested it with the pump, the flow didn't look right, so I made a few modifications. I put pieces of foam above the tube and rounded the top of the back piece. The excess from that cut was placed in front of the tube. Now this is what I was looking for. A slow trickle of water down the entire back. I modified the foam by making slits along the top. The cuts are only three quarters of the way through. This allowed me to create a grid to secure moss without other components. I cut slits into the top piece as well. After all of that, the drip wall effect worked even better. Now we can finally add the moss. Before I show you what I found, I gave the moss a quick dip in water to remove debris and pests. I only found a few types including thread moss, hypno moss, and haircap moss. The patches I harvested were all growing in or near running water. I also kept most of the material they were growing on. Being mindful of these should help the moss thrive immediately without acclimation issues. I'll link up a video that goes into detail on moss collection if you want to learn more. The process of planting the moss was really simple and is something I'll definitely utilize for future builds. I used the cuts in the foam and the edges of the container to hold the moss. Since the moss is light and the foam is textured, very little needs to be secured. I found that the process was easier with tweezers, but any thin utensils should do the job. For design purposes, I mixed the mosses together for textural contrast. Even with a limited selection, I was able to create a really interesting look. Once I got to the bottom, I stood the container up and placed the moss like usual. We're good to go, it just needs water. Here it is, the self-watering mini moss wall. The idea is not to have a crazy waterfall or anything like that. The goal is to create a beautiful moss display that practically takes care of itself. Yes, you have to top off the water every few days, but you don't need to constantly spray the moss to keep it hydrated. You also have to occasionally service the pump. Since nothing is attached, it can be taken apart, serviced, and put back together in a matter of minutes. Plus, by the time you need to do that, the moss will have already attached itself to the foam. To go with the hands-free theme, I recommend setting the light on a timer. I personally prefer a 6 hour photo period, but do whatever works for you. All around, I think it's a really attractive piece. It was cheap and easy to make and features moss. What more could you ask for? Obviously, I kept my design simple to really showcase the moss, but this could easily be customized and embellished with other elements. Small hardscape items could be arranged throughout or even wedged into the foam prior to adding the moss. I'll leave that up to you. That's all I can think to discuss at the moment though. Let me know what you think of the build down in the comments and if this is something you'd try yourself. Completely unrelated, but for those of you who don't know, I'm also on Instagram and TikTok if you're looking for daily content. Anyway, that's all for now. As always, I really hope you enjoyed this project and learned something new. Until next time, Serpa Squad, stay mossy and peace.